Wow, you just built your first gay big PC. Are, are you proud of yourself? Well, you should be, but there's just one problem. All these guides out there show you how to build the PC, but then they don't tell you what to do next. How the heck do you start actually gaming on this thing? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, in fact, right after this. Are you tired of that annoying activate windows message? Quietly judging you and your life choices from the corner of your screen? Why not freaking do something about it and order a genuine Windows 10 key from SCD key? Just go over to the Windows 10 Pro page on SCD key and add it to your cart. And get this. Get this, you guys. You can use my special super secret promo code DWEEB to save 25 freaking percent. And then you can use the key to activate your copy of Windows. And then th th that's it. You're done. You're, you're good to go. Oh, and once you're activated, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free if you're into that sort of thing. Can you freaking believe it? No. No, you can't. Hello. Hi there. I'm TechDweeb. Welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video. So, you've followed my guide for picking out the parts for your gay big PC, and you've followed my guide for actually building your, your gay big PC. And since then, that PC has just been sitting there. Sitting there doing nothing. Like a useless waste of metal and silicon. What a freeloader. Well, don't take it out on your new PC. It's not your new PC's fault that it's not playing games yet. It's yours. But don't be hard on yourself either, because you've been waiting for this guide that'll explain what to do now. How to transform this working yet useless PC into a working and useful and fun to game on PC. Not log now, my friend. Not log. So yeah, this is the final video in my PC building series, and today we're going to talk about all the steps that you need to do to get up in gaming. It's actually very simple and straightforward, so let's not waste any time here and... Hey, 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 I, I, I said no wasting time. This is a serious video, cut that out. <laughs> let's not waste any time and get this thing all set up and ready to game on, shall we? The first step before we do any software installations is to make sure that everything's set up properly in the BIOS. Sometimes when you start your PC for the first time, you'll be taken right into the BIOS. It might, it might tell you it's loading defaults or ask you what you want to do. Or like my PC here, it says to reboot and select a boot device because we don't have an operating system installed. So we'll need to use a shortcut key to get into the BIOS. Usually, this is the delete key, but sometimes it's F1 or F2 or F10 or F11. So try delete and then, then try others if it doesn't work. So start up your PC and just mash that delete key the whole time until you get into the BIOS. For this part, I'll need to speak in generalizations because each motherboard has different BIOS software. So yours might look different and the stuff might be in different places. So just look through the BIOS through each menu to find what you're looking for. Don't go touching stuff that you don't understand. There, there will be lots in there that you don't understand. But just looking through the settings can't hurt anything. There's two things that we need to do in here. Uh, we need to make sure all of our components are detected and th then set our proper RAM speed. This should be straightforward, but if you're having trouble doing any part of this, then just jump on Google and search for your specific motherboard and whatever you're looking for, and you should find a guide. I can't show you all the different motherboard softwares, and each one does it slightly different. The first page of your BIOS should show you the components, at least the CPU and the RAM. If it's not there, you'll have to go looking through the menus. The, the storage options might be listed under storage settings. Yeah, here on my BIOS, it's under advanced storage configuration, then NVMe configuration, because we have an NVMe SSD for our system drive. So we're good here. Our processor is detected, and our RAM is detected, and our SSD is detected. I explained in the last video what to do if your stuff isn't detected, so let's not worry about that and move on to the next step, which is setting our RAM speed. Your RAM will come at a rated speed. For instance, our DDR4 RAM is rated for 3200 MHz, but it won't be running at that speed out of the box. It'll default to a much lower speed, which is set by your motherboard and processor configuration. And it's up to us to enable XMP, which is the setting that's used to enable our RAM to run at faster speeds. It might also be called DOCP or Expo on your motherboard, if you have an AMD motherboard. So look through the BIOS for anything labeled XMP or or a DOCP or Expo. It'll usually be under the overclocking settings because running your RAM at faster speeds is technically overclocking, but don't worry about that. It's, it's very easy to do. On my motherboard, it's called XMP and you can turn it on by selecting profile one. 
You might have more than one profile, but 99% of the time, profile one is the one you want to choose. And uh, that that's it. We, we've done our bio stuff. So just save your settings, which is usually under the exit menu, and we're ready to install the operating system. Installing Windows is the part that gets lots of people stuck. Like, how do you get Windows on this thing? And, and how do you activate the Windows? Well, it's actually very simple. First, you'll need a Windows key. Well, technically you don't need a Windows key. You can, you can totally install and use Windows without one, but you'll get annoying activation, nagging messages, and the Windows won't let you customize the desktop and a bunch of other stuff. So most people just choose to buy Windows. You can buy Windows from Microsoft if you like paying 140 bucks, but I suggest you use this video sponsor, SCD Key. Uh, these guys, they, they sell full versions of Windows 10 or 11 for, for like 15 bucks if you use my offer code dweeb. I've bought many keys from them over the years and they've always worked out great. And if you have a Windows 10 license, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for, for free at any time. And the second thing that you'll need to install Windows is some sort of installation media. And the way that I'm going to suggest that you do that is just to grab any USB flash drive with at least 8 gigabytes of space. You'll need to use a different PC to install the media if you're, if you're going to go this route, by the way. So use a laptop or a friend's PC or whatever. And you'll need to use a free tool called the Windows 10 and media creation tool. It's a free download. You can just grab it from the Microsoft website. I'll include a link for that below. Uh, so plug in the USB drive, run that program, select create installation media when given the option. Make sure that it shows the correct version of Windows that you're going to be installing. Select USB flash drive and then select the USB drive that you've put in your PC. Uh, do not accidentally select the wrong drive or you will lose data. You have been warned. So it'll take a few minutes and it'll download the latest version of the Windows installer and put it on your USB drive. And when that's done, you could eject your drive. So insert your new Windows USB installation media into your new PC and start up the computer. It should start up from the installation media, or you might get a boot menu, or you might be taken into the BIOS, where you'll have to find the boot menu. Most of the time, it'll just boot right from your USB drive, since that's the only bootable disk on the system. Uh, once you're in the Windows installer, just click through the prompts. Uh, when it asks you for the Windows key, you can either leave this blank if you're installing without a key, but this is where you should add the key that you got from your Windows 10 Pro purchase over at SCD key. Once you add that, you'll never need to enter this code again. It's yours now. Make sure that you select the correct drive for installing. If you have a storage drive and an SSD, make sure you select the SSD as your system drive. When it's done, it's going to reboot. And when you see the getting ready message, you can unplug your installation USB drive. It'll take a minute or two to get ready. It'll reboot once or twice. And after that, you'll be taken to another screen where you could set up Windows with your language and stuff. I'm in Canada, so I'll choose that. But you shouldn't choose Canada if you're not in Canada. And if you're in Canada, well, then uh, grab me a Timmy's on your way over, would you? Uh, you can connect to a network at this point if you have a Wi-Fi or whatever, but if you do that, you'll be forced to set up a Microsoft account. I'm, I'm just going to set up a, a local account here, so I'll skip this part. Continue with limited setup, select a username, choose a password. I'm going to leave the password blank for now. And then this next part, it'll ask you if you want to sell your soul to Microsoft. So go ahead if you want to, but I'm just going to select no for everything in this part. And then after that, it'll take another minute or two to finish the setup and boom. Look at that. We're, we're in Windows. Nice. Uh, one thing that I like to do first is open the task manager with control shift and escape and then click on more details and go to the performance tab and then go through all the categories and make sure that everything's working that correctly, that everything's detected. Uh, may make sure your CPU is there, that it's running at the right speed. Make sure your XMP settings for your RAM are correct. Ours is 3200 megahertz, so we're good there. And, and make sure your storage is showing up. If something doesn't look right here, you'll need to do some troubleshooting. And I suggest you do that now before you go installing a bunch of stuff. But that's beyond the scope of this guide. And before we go installing drivers and software, there's one important thing that I like to do, and that's de-bloat the system. I like to uninstall the following pre-installed programs. OneDrive, Office, OneNote, Skype, and a few other default Windows programs that I know I'll never use. Just go through your start menu and look for things you're not going to use and uninstall them. You can always re-download those later if you want them. Now, before we start installing any updates, I'm going to install the GPU driver. The reason that I want to do this myself is because once we go online and start updating Windows, it'll try to do it for us automatically. And usually it chooses an older, outdated version of the driver, and then you'll have to manually update it again. So we'll just do it ourselves first. But before we do that, we want to stop Windows from trying to do it 
on its own as soon as we go online. So go into your settings app and then go to updates and security and select pause updates for seven days. This will let us get our own GPU driver before Windows tries to do it for us. So now I'm good to go online. Uh, there we go. So now we can open up Microsoft Edge uh, and go grab our GPU driver. So type in the name of your graphics card and the word driver. I have an RTX 3050, so I'm going to search for RTX 3050 driver. It should be the first result. For, for me, it's the official GeForce drivers. If you have an AMD or Intel GPU, the process will be very similar. They just have different websites and their tools are different names. Once that's done, you can run the installer and go through the process to install the driver. NVIDIA gives you the option to install GeForce Experience, which is a program that you could use to do a few things, but the reason that I like to install it is because it gives you reminders to update your GPU driver whether when there's a new driver update. Once the driver installation is done, your screen will flicker a few times and then boom, your display driver installation is done. And now that that's done, we can unchain Windows Update and get Windows up to date and let it update all of our other drivers and stuff. This will take a while, anywhere from like 10 minutes to a few hours, depending on your internet connection speed. So let Windows Update do its thing. It might tell you that you need to restart a few times. So just check this update screen in the settings every so often and let it install the updates until it says you're up to date. That's how you know that you're up to date, believe it or not. And the final step is the most important, choosing a custom desktop wallpaper. So open up Bing and search for cute cat wallpaper and pick whichever cute cat you like the best. I suggest this cat for right here though, because it's the cutest one. So with the installation and setup done, it's time to install the software of your choice. This part is variable, it'll, it'll depend on which software you like installed, but I'll use this opportunity to give you a list of all the software that I install right away on a new PC. The very first thing I install after the GPU driver is Google Chrome. I use Chrome for my browser needs. Some people prefer Firefox, some people just stick with Edge. I don't care what you do, but I like Chrome, so that gets installed right away. Steam is my game storefront of choice, that's where I have most of my games, so that gets installed right away. And immediately upon installing Steam, I uh, install a small game just to grease the groove and make sure that the games will download and install correctly. Usually I go with Teleglitch because it's so tidy. It does, uh, downloads in like 20 seconds. A good game too, Teleglitch. Try this one if you haven't yet. 7-Zip is my decompression software tool of choice. It's been around for ages. Everyone loves this one. It's no fuss. It works with all the popular compression formats. This is the one, trust me. MSI Afterburner is the software that I use to monitor by FPS and the game data via the in-game overlay. I, I created a tutorial for how to set up this overlay, and I also made a tutorial of how to use MSI Afterburner to overclock your GPU, and also how to undervolt your GPU. So check my channel for those videos if you want to know uh, a lot more about how to use this awesome program. Folder Size Pop-Ups is a quality of life program that I use all the freaking time. So I just install it by default because I hate not having it when I want it. It's uh, simple, it just lets you see the size of the the folders on your drives. It, uh, it's such a, a simple thing. You'd think it should be baked into Windows, but I guess it's more complicated than that. So I just add this as a start menu shortcut and I turn it on whenever I need it. And you can also toggle it from the taskbar icons. So these are my five things that I install right away on every new computer, but there's other stuff, of course, that I install as I need it. Other storefronts like the Epic Game Store and GOG and Ubisoft and Battle.net. If your motherboard had RGB software, you could install that. If you have special drivers or software needed for your stuff like like a, your mouse or keyboard or microphone or whatever just go nuts with all that if you plan on doing any game capturing or streaming you can install obs to handle that but you don't need me to show you that here now you need me to show you what it's like to game on a new pc don't ya yeah, you've been patient and it's taken us three videos, but let's see what this thing can do, shall we? So what kind of experience will we get when we build our own budget gaming PC? Well, a pretty darn good one, if I do say so myself. So once again, for this PC, we set a budget of $600. And I didn't calculate the exact grand total after tax and everything, but I estimate that we're at between six and $700, all in. I'll include links to all the parts that I used in this build in the description below if you'd like to follow along at home. This is a solid budget machine. With a setup like this, you can expect to play most modern games at 1080p with high settings and get between 60 and 100 FPS. 
if you're looking to get into esports games, you're probably going to be looking at getting between 150 and 250 FPS with components like this, depending on the game, obviously. We have 8 gigabytes of RAM to work with with this RTX 3050, and all the RTX features that we need, like DLSS or even ray tracing, to let us enjoy the games the way that we want, either looking their best or playing at really high frame rates. Uh, there, there's a big debate in the PC world right now about whether or not 8 gigabytes of VRAM will be enough in the years to come, but I, I think it's overblown, to be honest. I think 8 gigabytes will be fine for a couple years at least. But most of the issues with sub 8 gigabyte GPUs are down to game optimizations, and lots of them have already been fixed. Last of Us on PC was a game that ran terribly on 8 gigabyte GPUs, but since the latest update, it's been fine. But hey, there's always new PC components out there. There's always sales on the old stuff. The landscape is always changing. That's why I made this series. I want you to have a method to find out what is good and a good value at the time that you go to build your gaming PC. And I hope that I've given you all the tools you, you need to figure out what you need to do when you're ready to pull the trigger. I had a great time making this series, and I hope you learned something and had some fun with me along the way. And that brings us to the end. I hope you found this video and all the videos in this series useful and informative. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions and you think I did it cover. This was a general guide, but I'm happy to make some more specific video tutorials if there's anything you need help with. Let me know in the comments. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video, or don't if you didn't. This video series, like all my videos, are brought to you by my wonderful patrons who help support the channel and make what I do possible. If you'd like to hop on board and help support the things that I do, uh, consider checking out the link in the description below. Well, that's it for me. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.